So hi everyone and today we are going to do that is noise models. So this is in continuation with the previous two videos. Uh, all throughout we have been talking about just two things throughout that is h of x comma y which is my degradation function which is going to degrade my image which will be convoluted in the spatial domain as you can see over here. And the second is the noise term, which is the additive noise. So these two things are going to, you know, degrade the quality of the image. If I don't have any uh, image reconstruction or restoration mechanism in my camera, then I'll be getting some not good looking images, right? So we'll just see over here that how are these things going to affect my image or degrade the quality of image. But for a better visualization, don't you think that uh, it will be better if we uh, remove the h of x comma y, that is we take it as an identity operator and just study that only how noise affects, right? Just, just ignore this h of x comma y, the degradation function for now. And we have g of x comma y, the degraded image is equal to f of x comma y, the original image plus n of x comma why? That is, we're just going to take into consideration the noise factor, that's all. But the question is, what noise is basically, since two videos, it's like noise degradation function, noise degradation function. So, for now, we have ignored the degradation function, then what the noise is? You have always started that noise is an unwanted signal. Okay, supposedly, uh, I have an industry where I develop humanoid robots. Those humanoid robots are very much similar to humans. They walk like humans, they talk like humans, they laugh like humans. And they're totally like, like humans, right? Just the difference, only difference being that they're not made by God and they are made by humans ourselves, right? So I have a counter in my industry that counts that, okay, these are the number of robots which are made. If I go there, and stand in a row where the robot assembly is being there, then the counter will mistakenly count me as well. I am unwanted, right? That is what unwanted signal implies. I am also unwanted, though I look very similar to them, or you can say that they look similar to me after all. So we were similar. So the counter was not able to distinguish that, okay, this was a human, right? Or it's like, this happened. So I distorted the original count. I degraded the quality of count. I am the noise in that case. Similarly, the noise is a signal similar to image, just like I was similar to those human robots, if you remember. And I was unwanted. That is what it's written over here even. It's an unwanted signal which distorts the original pixel intensity values, thus degrading the quality of image. So that's what noise do. And one more thing, this is a qualitative definition, right? But quantitatively, I told you one more thing. Just try to remember the last two videos. I said that noise is nothing but just a random number. Okay, you guys just do one task. Pick any random number. I too will pick, right? Okay, I pick 11. Right. What I'll just do is that whatever my original 2D matrix of image is, which is going to have the intensity values from 0 to 255, I'll just add 11 to all the pixel values as per this equation. That is how I added noise. Name any other pixel value or any other noise component, any other random number. 7. Okay, I added 7. Okay, one interesting thing, very really interesting thing is that I can also choose the random number as minus 8. Yeah, we can do it 8. It will remain the additive noise only, right? But I'm just adding minus 7 to it. So that's how I can also perform subtraction, right? So that's that's a new thing you learned over here. So that is my random number. But my question is, is it that when my camera captures, how it decides the random number it chooses, right? Because that's not intentional thing which is happening over there. That is due to certain reason that uh, noise is happening over there. In further videos, we will surely even study that. What are the different sources of noise? That is it due to image? Is it during the time of image acquisition? That is, or it is during the transmission? Or what are the various sources of the noise? That how the noise gets added. But just forget that how the noise got added. But 
it's not that how it knows that what random number is added, right? There can be certain phenomenon, right? For that, it's that we have certain probability density functions or the distributions going on. And the noise follows those probability density functions. Like just see over here, we have Gaussian, right? Gaussian noise, which is one of the noise models I'll be teaching you in a few minutes, right? So here it's a curve for Gaussian distribution. The noises will be following these curves. That's how I'll be generating the random numbers. Cool? But for all these noise models, there are two assumptions. Just listen to them very carefully. They are very easy to learn. The first is that they are independent of spatial coordinates. What does this mean? If my image is a 2D array, then this implies that there will be indexing definitely, like there will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, or there will be like 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, and so on. But what I'm using for generating the noise, that random number, I'm using this PDFs, the probability density distributions over here. Can you just see any X or Y or any usage of coordinate over here? No, I'm not using that. Because it's just a random number. I need not to have the spatial coordinates, right? So it's independent of spatial coordinates. The second one is that uncorrelated with the image. That is, there is no relation between the pixel values and the noise components. Had there been any relation between pixel values and the noise components, then what would have been happening is that, say for the noise, uh, with uh, say for the pixel with the intensity value 127, I'll be having noise component say 5. Then for 255, I'll be having 10. So I'll be having different noise components, had there been some relation. But no, there's just this one single formula which will be applied throughout the image, right? So these two assumptions are uh, very easy. So that's what we'll be following throughout. So there are various noise models. So the different noise models uh, will be the Gaussian, Rayleigh, Erlang, Exponential, Uniform, Impulse, Salt and Pepper. Don't get horrified with the names. It'll be very easy as we go on studying. But in this video, I'm not, uh, I'll not be telling you about in detail about all these, right? Firstly, I'll tell you that why we need to study these noise models, right? Before doing anything, we, we need to know that. Actually, you'll be knowing in a few minutes. But just, just do me one favor. I'll be showing you certain graphs of these distributions. Please try to remember those graphs, right? So this is graph for Gaussian. I'll also help you in learning, right? So this is like a normal distribution. Simple. Gaussian is just like normal distribution. Next, Rayleigh. Just try to split this graph in two parts. The left portion is a bit steeper one. And this portion is just like Gaussian one. Yeah, that's the Rayleigh. Moving on to third, Erlang or the gamma noise. Ignore these things, right? Just, just don't worry for that. We'll be taking up each noise model, single, single, and telling in detail about it in the further videos. Just look at the graph, right? How the shape looks like. This is a bit like Rayleigh. It's steeper over here, a bit looking like Gaussian over here, but one difference. Here, when the Z is zero, P of Z is having certain value, right? So just, just keep, just keep in mind this thing, right? The next is exponential. Oh, we are well aware about exponential till like since 11th or 12th standard or even before that. So this is the exponential curve. This is the uniform curve, which is like rectangle. Next is impulse, where there are spikes. This is also called salt and pepper noise. Why is it called salt and pepper? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, right? Just, just wait for the next videos. So here are all the models. Pause them for a minute. Please learn the shapes of it because I'll be using this to explain you that how noise gets added, right? So this is the Gaussian, like a normal distribution. Rayleigh, half of it is steeper and on the right hand side, it's like a Gaussian. Gamma or Erlang, a bit like Rayleigh, but it is having certain P of Z value when Z is zero. The exponential, the uniform like 
a rectangle and for the impulse which is salt and pepper we have two spikes cool so we have this original image we'll be just doing some matlab functions over here so matlab will be in intentionally introducing the noise and i'll just help you to visualize that how this image looks like when the noise gets added to it right for that what we do is we have the image we plot the histogram of the image and then we add the noise to it and then the histogram whatever noise model it resembles this helps us to know that this was the noise which was being added and that's then we reverse the process and get back the original image very simple okay if you're not able to understand just wait for a minute you'll be able to this is the image and this is the histogram for the image let me firstly explain to you that how for this image we got this histogram you know that in histogram in the x axis we have the intensity values which will be from 0 to 255 right so here we will be having the intensity values from 0 to 255 and here is the p probability right which is nothing but the frequency of the pixel supposedly here its intensity is 0 so here we will be having the number of pixels with the intensity 0 divided by total number of pixels right if you see over here this is a black region and black is having the intensity 0 so this spike is for this black region then we have gray Gray is nearly, I guess, having the intensity 127 or 128. So here is the spike for this gray region, this one. And then lastly, this is uh like white, not exactly white, so near to white. So this will be having my intensity uh near to 255. So here is the third spike of near to 255, right? Now what we'll be doing is that this is the original histogram. now we added gaussian noise to it and this is the histogram we obtained you can see this curve is the normal bell shaped curve just like the gaussian curve so this means the gaussian noise was added over here okay can you uh, just see from the histogram that which noise uh, is added over here it's really steeper over here a bit like gaussian over here you can compare both of them right this is erlang how just see that there is certain p of z value over here right just notice very carefully so it's at z is equals to 0 it's not having 0 it is having certain p of z while here if you see just compare it with the other two right so this means here the allang noise was added okay next this histogram this is of exponential just just guess it and answer it out yourself this is uniform the rectangle like and here it's spike so it's impulse noise and just see over here right that, that uh, it's from the image you can know that white is called salt and pepper because there's certain white and black dots throughout so that's how by knowing or having a knowledge of the noise models i can just know from the image that okay this was the degradation which took place this was the additive noise which degraded the quality of my image so but if it's so easy right like you can just see over here like it is it is so easy to identify it's not a rocket science right but then why are we not able to achieve 100% accuracy that's the question can you think of it for a minute okay i'll answer practically it's not that how you see this is just a matlab thing in matlab uh this image is taken we added the noises to it plotted the histograms and that's what you got but practically it's not that there is a single noise which is affecting your image there will be combination of noise quite possible there is combination of gaussian and relay or there is combination of uniform and gaussian or it's more than that we never know so it's very difficult to exactly know that how many uh, noises affected my image but having a bit of idea will help me get the accuracy close to 100 if not nearly 100 that's why we study these noise models so i hope the concept is clear that why are we going to study this now in the next videos what we'll be doing is that we'll be studying all of these curves and what is something special characteristics of all these noises so thanks a lot